After three be two days, the world's most populous Arab nation will soon have its fourth president in four years. But as Chief Washington Correspondent James Rosen tells us, the low turnout will only add complexities to the America relationship with Egypt. That voting in the Egyptian presidential election was extended to a third day, a transparent effort to boost turnout above the mid-30% level seen on the first two days drew criticism from international monitors. Our 86 accredited observers around Egypt did not see anything that would necessitate an additional day. The government also shut down shopping malls and threatened to fine those who stayed away from the polls. In the end, the judiciary claimed a turnout rate of 44%, with a 93% share for Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, the former military chief who orchestrated last July's bloody coup against Egypt's first democratically elected president, Mohamed Morsi of the Islamist Muslim Brotherhood. Today, with Morsi and his top aides in jail, hundreds of supporters killed, the Brotherhood branded a terrorist organization. Morsi's actual brother, Saeed, vowed to make life difficult for the new president. We will continue until the coup fails. He will have an insurgency that will be growing in his country that he will have to deal with. It's inevitable that a portion of the Muslim Brotherhood, those that are more prone to, to violence, will certainly seize this moment because they don't have an alternative. And that certainty of continued political conflict could jeopardize LCC's broader goals of luring foreign investment and tourism back to Egypt and reducing the poverty that afflicts almost half the country's 80 million people. To that end, an Egyptian-American law professor urged LCC to begin a reconciliation with the Muslim Brotherhood. I suggest that the United States and the European Union participate in being a moderator, but because I think it's in the best interest of the country as a whole for those two uh, stakeholders to work towards making a better Egypt rather than holding Egyptians hostage to their very long-standing dispute. Yet recent history suggests El Sisi will not pursue such a path anytime soon. The question for the United States is how do they deal with a new president who on one hand uh, represents the military with which the United States has an important strategic relationship but on the other hand is likely to behave quite undemocratically. And President Obama seemed aware of that tension in his speech at West Point, where he said the U.S. would not, quote, cut off cooperation with the new government in Egypt, but would press persistently for reforms. Brett?